My name is Hannah Daly. I play soccer, and this is my story. Jesus, I'm spitting this for your glory. I grew up in the church, but something happened to me that really hurt. The good news of Jesus became a vaccine. It entered my veins, and I became immune to the truth of John 3.16. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead should have completely shook me at my core. But without complete surrender, I wrote it off and looked for something more. With my lips, I said Jesus was my Lord, but my heart spoke a different word. It was evident by my actions. Sports monopolized my passions. The drive to be the best consumed my mind. My biggest fear was getting behind. I killed myself in the weight room, not knowing what was to follow was my due. My life was grounded in sports. And soon, I was only concerned with how I looked in gym shorts. An eating disorder was to follow, and my life slowly turned hollow. I thought the anorexia would give me that edge, but I soon found myself walking on a very narrow ledge. I was a prisoner chained by a lie, believing that soccer would satisfy. My very worth was in my success, and I wouldn't settle for less. My life was a tiring cycle. Wake up, hungry, work out, recycle. Soccer is where I found life's meaning, which is sad to think because it is so fleeting. But on April 17th, 2009, something happened to me that I now call divine. I blew out my knee playing in a soccer game, and now I know it was because Jesus was not my aim. Everything I had built my life on was taken away, in a snap of my fingers, in a matter of seconds, all in one day. The words of the doctor echoed in my ears, you're done with soccer at least for a year. Through this experience, I have learned a great lesson, and I will tell it to you before you try guessing. My view of God was that he was a genie in a lamp. I would pray to him, believing that he would make me into that soccer champ. I only knew Philippians 4.13, thinking that with Jesus, he would make me into a soccer machine. The verse says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And this was the extent of my Christianity at Lent. I sat in my room, confused and dazed, crying out to Jesus, why can't you save me from this haze? I didn't understand what it meant to be Christian. I thought it meant only going to church and listening. I thought that God was my good luck charm, but now it felt like he was only doing harm. I wore crosses around my neck, believing that my good works would save me from what comes next. But salvation is not an appearance, thinking you clean up the exterior and receive the inheritance. I had a problem and it's called sin, and I needed a savior to wash me from within. Salvation starts in the heart, in allowing Jesus Christ to do his part. He said it is done when he died on that tree, making salvation a free gift for me. It's not letting Jesus be a vaccine. It's completely tr believing the truth of John 3.16. My inherent nature is complete depravity, and denying that is like saying there ain't no gravity. There's nothing I can do to save my soul. I just deserve that eternal hope. God is just. Therefore, a punishment for my sin is a must. But God's love for me prompted him to action. And he made a remedy for my sin because of his great compassion. So God proposed a question as I lay in my room. A question that needs to be answered really soon. Would I surrender and give Jesus control? Or continue to doubt and dig a deeper hole? Jesus said, turn from your sin and trust in me and I will make you completely free. The thought of freedom was a joyous word, but it would only come through making Jesus my Lord. So I surrendered my life's steering wheel and slowly began to heal. When I say I am second, the meaning is this. Now hear me out, I'm not looking for this. God is the creator and I am the creature. And it is Jesus Christ my life should feature. This life that I have been graciously given is not to be spent on selfish living. My purpose is to worship the one who saved me from my fall and choose to be second because he gave me his all. Now I can summarize all this in one word. Turn to Jesus and trust him as your savior and Lord. The world and its pleasures are passing away, but God's word is here to stay. God's word says repent or perish. Repenting is turning from the dumb idols to cherish. My dumb idol is not saved. It only suck away the life that Jesus gave. There are so many things that steal our attention, and therefore there is one more thing I would like to mention. 
When you stand before Jesus' judgment throne, what earthly possessions will you own? All the trophies that you earn will give you nothing in return. Don't invest your life with unfulfilling things. Let Jesus Christ be your king. And when you fall in love with him, the desire to be number one grows dim. My name is Hannah Daly. I'm in Tar Heel, and I am second.